five, four, three, two, one. Hello and welcome back. And that is right, it's myself and Eddie the web guy over there on the other side of the country and <laughs> what was that? That's last five seconds. Oh. I promise not. Sorry, no, sorry. It's, it's Your gone. coffee machine has got <laughs> terrible timing. What was wrong with Nescafe? What was wrong with just getting a kettle? I am a very old man. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Hello and welcome back. And that's right, it's myself and Eddie the web guy over there on the other side of the country. And today, we want to talk about QNAP and... Just what the hell is going on with QNAP? Of all the brands that we talk about here on the channel, I would argue QNAP, uh, if not in the top five, then maybe even the top three. But I would say that late 2023 and 2024 felt really sparse. We didn't see a lot of hardware releases. We saw kind of stealth uh, releases from them, a lot of their movements. And with so many players entering the NAS world right now, we have got to wonder... What is going on with QNAP? So before I even get into the wheat here, the good, the bad, and the question marks, Eddie, what's immediately your perspective right now? Uh, about QNAP, I think they seem to be very quiet, but they actually they've been quite busy in the background. They have released their biggest um, guns out there, like 74 series and, and 77 series. Uh, I think they did what they need to do. Uh, they're not shouting about things that what they do, but uh, based on the reports that I have, uh, what they did in past 365 days, they actually did more releases than any other brand uh, out in the market. But they haven't been shouting about it too much. And you know what? It's probably worth highlighting immediately. QNAP are not paying for this video. QNAP, Synology, all the rest of them, none of them sponsor the videos. This is our own perspective. But more importantly, Eddie's coming at this from a sense of analytics. He's gone through a lot of data there and worked out their release strategy and a lot of their new stuff. I've gone with simple organic searches. So we can cover both ends of the spectrum to try and identify this whole what the hell's going on with QNAP thing. But he's absolutely right. There have been lots of sub-releases from QNAP. A lot of their more affordable two-bays and four-bay devices there at the entry-level IRM-bay stuff, and a lot of rack mount stuff, indeed switches. Now, immediately, I've got notes here, and again, I'm sure there'll be stuff that Eddie will add to this, but immediately, uh, the parent company of uh, QNAP there, IEI uh, Integration Corporation, they went in the two-year period from the end of 2022 into the end of 2024, their share prices went up 31%. Uh, that is a company valued at 13.6 billion Taiwanese dollars. So that's just shy of half a billion USD. That's a big rate of growth there. Over time, it's like just shy of 5% annual growth year on year. So their parent company, much like Xbox and Microsoft, have got money to throw out there. Now, we've seen a lot of that innovation in things more software-led, something that a lot of us have demanded. For example, running ZFS, the QUTS platform, is now available on the 64, 62, and 53E series. These are Celeron powered NASes. We also saw a slew of new 10 GBE, 25 GB, and 100 gigabit Ethernet switches from the brand. Um, we saw them join Pwn to Own, uh, um, appearing there at both 2023 and 2024. Increased security, TCG, Ruby uh, encryption there on their NVMEs. We saw them adding uh, air gapping to hybrid backup. We saw AI powered cinematic searches for more organic, native organic searches of the data on your system. My QNAP storage cloud, QTS 5, QTS 5.1, QTS 5.2. 15 offices, or two more offices opened up in that time period. So it's really strange how with all of that going on, many of the things I've just discussed were kind of stealth. QNAP didn't really make a big noise when launching them. Now, for you, Eddie, why do you suppose that is? I don't know. Also, we haven't seen them in expos as often. I think they mm. rethought their strategy. And instead of um, throwing money at all these um, marketing companies, they're just going to uh, invest that in their own products because they stepped up the game as well with security and with software, what you just mentioned as well, introducing ZFS in uh, lower tier uh, NASes and releasing all sorts of gadgets like Thunderbolt, uh, uh, USB 4, um, 10 gig adapters and all sorts of cards and switches. There's so many things released. And I think they just decided to allocate or dedicate that money into product development rather than shouting about these things because it costs quite a lot to tell people 
what they have done. But if you have uh, good uh, followers, they will speak about those products anyway, and that uh, word will get out in the world, and people will find out the, about these things naturally. I mean, I, I agree with you for the most part, but I will say, <clears throat> on the one hand, they seemingly have taken on a lot of the criticism that people gave them about company culture and priorities. Um, one of the, the, the two biggest criticisms I ever had about QNAP products, you know, not taking into account deadbolt, something we've covered extensively on the channel, is number one, their portfolio had too many solutions. They had, I think it was 13 to 14 different desktop four bays. It was just too much. There was too much overlap. And they weren't focusing enough on the software. Now, these are two criticisms that they have seemingly addressed to a point. And I think that transitional period into a new model, um, a business model, makes a lot of sense. Nevertheless, a lot of the solutions they've got at the mark in the, mo uh, the moment at the $1,000 to $1,500 model, um, that kind of tier is looking incredibly sparse. To put it into comparison, looking at the uh, what I've got here in front of me, the the four uh, TS four six four, the you know the two, the four, and the six bay series, they were released in spring twenty twenty two. The four six two dual core series, December twenty twenty two. The little uh, NAS book, January twenty twenty two. The five three E twenty twenty two. The seven three A series was released in twenty twenty one and early. I'm sorry, in late twenty twenty. So many of their go-to kind of Adidas Reebok classic style devices of popularity have seen no refresh. Some of them for almost, it's coming close to four years. And the problem with anyone making a purchase now is in the last year alone, there have been substantial solutions presented in the market. Less so from their premium competitor Synology, but certainly the third place Taiwanese companies like Acer Store and a lot of the Chinese companies that have moved into this market really challenging QNAP. And I don't know how QNAP intends to address this. They've got to roll out some new, well, again, the 500 to 1500 pound solutions. They've got to refresh all of those devices there. You think so? Because I think this is what they did in the past few years. They did the space race with Synology, especially in other brands. And they they were pushing out products with very powerful hardware, more powerful than it was actually required. And uh, Synology is actually facing the same problem now with their 21 plus series models with Ryzen CPU. It's so good CPU that there is no need to refresh that product but uh, they're shooting themselves actually in the foot with uh, uh, their support cycle. Because normally when they release a new model, like 21 plus series, that means you'll get firmware updates for the next 10 years. And now it has been four or five years already with this hardware, and people are asking to recycle that product, even though it's not necessary, because that mm. hardware can last for another five to 10 years easily. But uh, simply because the support will end in six years if they'll buy this old model. And QNAP has the same problem, problem uh, per se. They were competing with this hardware. They released all these powerful NASes, and now they see no need for a replacement because the hardware they have now, it's, it's good for another 10 years, really, for file storage, for simple uh, VMs, Docker, all these things. It's going to eat it all. It's going to work. Mm. I mean, again, we've got no access to the bottom line from QNAT when it comes to profitability, but they seem to have shifted more towards rack mount priorities and those switches, which is all fair and well. But it, I think that, that, that with Synology seeming to move themselves out of, I would say, the majority of the home prosumer enthusiast sort of early SMB, Q, um, Synology seems to be removing itself from that, leaving an open goal. And QNAP still is, but less so now, in a phenomenally great position to occupy that space with refreshing their solutions. And as you say, unlike the Synologies there that are running on processors that have got that 10-year support cycle from AMD, and therefore the next iteration of Synologies will almost certainly be the same or comparatively identical CPU with just 2.5 gig NICs slammed on the side, uh, QNAP 
all of their solutions, with the exception of one, are running on processors that are now massively out of support, like the N5105, which is, you know, Intel have closed the door on Celeron now. And then you have other ones like the J6412 uh, Intel Celeron, that although has support for a while, is still becoming an archaic processor there. So whereas Synology, as you rightly point out, don't have to refresh, the QNAPs look dated now. And even a, a relatively modest and ill-informed buyer, they're going to care about the hardware. And that hardware, when they look at the reviews and they see reviewed in 2020 or 2021 or news reports, it's going to be slightly eggy for them. Um, and notwithstanding QNAP not refreshing those product lines, we have to talk about another pressing problem, and that is their unique selling point. Um, now, if we look at some QNAP solutions, their, their, their biggest appeal over their biggest competitor, Synology, was Synology, everyone knows, has got their slick software, and QNAPs is good, but it's not quite there, but they make up for it in the hardware. They're a turnkey solution with the hardware. Now, the problem lies that with so many pre-built DIY NAS solutions entering the market alongside, you know, either completely free or, com you know, lightly subscription-based models from TrueNAS to Unraid arriving in the market, really closing the gap on capability, QNAP's universal selling point is, uh, sorry, unique selling point is watered down somewhat when things like their Thunderbolt NAS series USB 4 and Thunderbolt NAS are now a lot more common from other brands. They are not the only game in town. And even with their USB 4 adapters to 10 GBE and Promise 25 GBE, we've not seen them. They were revealed at Computex 2024, but we've not seen them. And it's three quarters of a year later, and they're still not around. Yet, there are other adapters in the market and people exploring this. And with, you know, USB 80 gig and Thunderbolt 5 around the corner, it only further enhances this point that it makes people go, well, QNAP said it would arrive and it's not there. I can look at the alternatives. And you look at the turnkey DIY solutions like the Zimmer Cube, uh, like, um, uh, well, again, we talked about one recently from Minis Forum, the N5 Pro. A lot of these systems are leaving people very, very impressed. And therefore... What QNAP can offer on top of these is becoming whittled down and diminished. QNAP need to make some bold, loud shouts about their platform. And I think it starts from these SMB enthusiast prosumer tier devices because those are the ones that get the most traction online and also bring in a lot of the revenue and a lot of the kudos and reputation. And QNAP really needs to hit down on that. Have you got any other recommendations I, I, you think, think they could make? I think you're right about it, that they need to decide what, uh, what is their um, target in, in this market. Because as you said, um, they were focusing very much on hardware side. Uh, but uh, in past few years, actually, they've been shifting towards software as well. Because if you need to list top five uh, NAS OSs out there, I would say QNAP is number two. And, and uh, other NAS operating systems are not as good because QNAP is usually looking at Synology and uh, adding extra features that Synology do not offer. But it's not always the easiest way to set things up. But I think now with Synology trying to exit uh, this uh, prosumer from market or small business market and going towards uh, the enterprise, I think QNAP will need to now take the place what Synology used to own all these uh, um, active backup for business, they could shift into that. They could get uh, SHR, uh, mixed drive support. All these things that Synology had, now they have big opportunity to claim that spot because their software is the second best in, in, the, in the world. Other brands are not as good. So it's uh, very easy or relatively easy to get and claim that spot before Synology exits. You know this market. I was going to say before people say in the comments because you've opened yourself up there to a lot of comments. Um, no. With regards to QNAP being the second best platform, I think I would, I, I would struggle to agree with you uh, in terms of software. Without the caveat that one, we are talking about a turnkey software that has all the apps and client support, that has mobile applications, that has a user friendly GUI in the web browser. In that context. I would agree with you, but I wouldn't say it goes 
Synology, QNAP, everyone else in terms of software, because TrueNAS and Unraid still provide a huge amount of flexibility. And I think, depending on the caveats you add, but I, 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 know, I know exactly what you're saying there, um, but at least when it comes to QUTS and QTS, one of the big things, before we wrap up this video, QNAP seems to be trying to move everything over to QUTS. Have you noticed that? QTS seems to be getting a little bit of a shovel. Now, yes, you're going to need QTS, the EXT4 version. You're going to have to have that because of these ARM-based systems that just are not going to be able to run the ZFS uh, file system and applications and that demand. But I'm definitely getting that feeling that this middle ground has to run QTS, uh, QUTS ZFS platform. And if they are going to release some new hardware, which we have, and we can't talk about it, have received, in, it received indications that they are going to in a two, four, and six bay format. We still don't know the actual hardware makeup of these model IDs. But if they do roll those out, it's pretty obvious to me that they're going to be shifting focus significantly towards uh, ZFS and QUTS. And with that, I'm willing to bet these solutions <clears throat> will not roll out the gate at the original four bay for five to 500 nicker. I think those days are going to be gone from QNAP. I think they're going to open at 650, 700 and more. They're going, and it's, it's not smart. They need to run that modest N100, you know, some of these Alder Lake or even the newer Twin Lake systems now to be competitive. Because right now they are getting pushed everywhere. And with Synology, as we've discussed, creating active protect and seemingly reprioritizing their portfolio to move a lot of that business level traffic in that direction qnap this market in the middle is a lot more populated than it was two to three years ago qnap are not just competing with synology anymore they're competing with frankly a revitalized asus store with a lot of their hardware really breaking boundaries although their software still lags behind a little bit and you've then you've got the likes of Terra Master there at the bottom not just nipping at everyone's heels, but now addressing a lot of the issues people had with the company with regards to design, a lot of the feature set, a lot of the hardware applications. They've got their own flash servers now. They've got dual 10 GBE and, you know, Intel i7 12th and 13th gen processors in their makeup. They are being competitive. And QNAP needs to be bolder right now. They've followed everyone's advice with regards to reprioritizing their software and recalibrating their entire portfolio to remove a lot of the chaff. But I'm not they are they've if anything they've overswung right now. Um but yeah let us know what you guys think in the comments. This is really just a general outview right now of where the hell QNAP is at. Do you agree with what we've said? Do you disagree with us? That's what the comments are for. Have I missed anything, Eddie? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, well, you know what? It's up to the comments to decide. I'm sure they'll tell us. But thank yeah. you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, and we'll see you on the next video. Cheerio.